Welcome back to Quick Bits. A lot happened the last week of January, including that evidentiary hearing in the Murdoch case that we have been waiting for. And in a surprise turn, Justice Toll ruled from the bench. So not only did we see Clerk of Court Becky Hill testify, we saw 11 jurors testify. And by saw, I mean heard their testimony. We're going to talk about that. Plus, TikTok loses all of Universal's music and is there new evidence in the Scott Peterson case? So let's get into it. I'm legal analyst Emily D. Baker. This is the Quick Bits, where I break down just the main points of the pop culture and entertainment cases I'm currently covering on YouTube and the Emily Show podcast. Let's get into it. Murda, murda, murda. What a strange case this has really turned out to be. For those of you that have been following, Alec Murda made a motion to stay his appeal after his conviction for the murder of his son and wife. And then he asked for a motion for a new trial. That's not decided by the appeals court. That would be decided by the trial court. However, the judge in that case recused himself and Justice Toll, former Supreme Court Chief Justice of the South Carolina Supreme Court and retired judge stepped in as the trial judge to hear this evidentiary hearing after the defense team alleged that the clerk of court had had conversations with the jurors about the substance of the case. And because of those allegations, the court determined that an evidentiary hearing would be held where the jurors would give testimony, the clerk of court, Becky Hill, would give testimony, and the court would rule. That hearing took the entire day on Monday, January 29th, 2024, I was very surprised by Becky Hill's testimony because there are some things that she said that were clearly contrary to what the jurors had testified to and what impeachment witnesses testified to. Yes, the defense called witnesses to impeach the credibility of Becky Hill, which Justice Toll, I think, agreed with because Justice Toll, in her ruling, finding that Alec Murdoch does not get a new trial, she said that clerk of court Becky Hill was seduced by the siren song of celebrity and that her comments were foolish and fleeting but the justice did find that clerk of court becky hill made comments to the jurors even if they were just as becky hill testified to a pep talk she shouldn't have been talking to the jurors about the case and numerous jurors testified that they heard becky hill say things like the defendant's testifying today's a big day make sure you pay attention but others testified, she said, pay attention to him, don't be fooled by the defense, and things of that nature. So while Justice Toll did not find it was sufficient for a new trial, this whole matter is going to go up on appeal. And the clerk of court came out of this looking like that not only she lied on the stand about things, but it looked as though she had improper conversations with the jurors, even if her motive wasn't to sway the jury to vote one way or the other. It is not within her job and it is completely improper. I'm not surprised there are sled investigations ongoing. And if there weren't, I'm sure there probably would be now. And on Thursday, when we swung back around to kind of close out the Murdoch case, we went over some of the clerk of court's emails and clerk of court Becky Hill was saying to folks in her email that was subpoenaed by a Freedom of Information Act request because she is a public official that she was waiting for her day to be heard to prove that everything Dick and Jim were saying about her were lies, maintaining that everything they said in their allegations against her was a lie, that she looked forward to being able to speak, that her lawyers advised her that she could speak, and she looked forward to clearing her name. It was very interesting to see her say the 14th Circuit is completely corrupt and start pointing the fingers at others. Those emails also confirmed that her cell phone was taken by SLED as part of the ongoing investigation into her son's wiretapping behavior, which he has been charged and arrested for. I, I feel like even though this part of the Murdoch case is done, we're still not done. There's going to be a lot more to come in this case. I can't believe it's already February, but if you are starting to think about some special dates with your special person, the one thing you want to handle to feel confident head to toe is any pesky body odor. We don't always talk about it, and we definitely don't want to smell it. 
but today's sponsor, Lumi, has you covered. Lumi is a game-changing whole-body deodorant designed by an OBGYN to work not only on pits, but also on feet, privates, and everywhere else. No matter where you use it, Lumi is clinically proven to block odor all day long, all thanks to its one-of-a-kind pH-optimized formula, and they've got over 275,000 five-star reviews to show for it. Lumi is a fantastic product that we use here at the Baker House for all members of the family. One of our family's favorite are the Lumi deodorant wipes. They are so convenient and easy. They are great when you are having to switch gears from one activity to the next or just, especially for our team, for long days with band. So if you are looking to try out the Lumi products, we've got a great deal for you and a perfect option with promo code QB Lawnard at lumideodorant.com. That's right, control body odor anywhere with Lumi deodorant and get $5 off your starter pack. That's over 40% off total when you use code QB Lawnard at lumideodorant.com. Let's get back into today's quick bits. On Thursday, we saw TikTok losing the access to all of the artists on Universal Music Group. That includes Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, Drake, Billie Eilish, and many, many more. So if you are on the TikTok platform and you're looking at older TikToks and they have no sound, that's why. Universal Music Group is now in a standoff with TikTok over artist pay and protection for artists on the platform from things like AI, uh, AI-generated images, AI-generated music, and we will see who wins and loses in this standoff, but they are pushing for some things with TikTok that I agree with. Better pay for artists, absolutely. Protection for artists against AI deep fakes, absolutely. And hopefully TikTok will resolve this with Universal soon and y'all can go back to making TikToks with Taylor Swift's music ahead of the Super Bowl. Bravo Network, home of all of the Real Housewife franchise and so many others, is in another lawsuit. Former Real Housewives of New Jersey star Caroline Manzo sued Bravo, NBC Universal, and the production companies over her alleged assault by former Real Housewife of Beverly Hills, Brandy Glanville, when the two were together filming Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. Now, Caroline Manzo is not suing Brandy Glanville. The lawsuit against NBC Universal and Bravo is regarding her allegations that Brandy sexually assaulted her and that production did nothing to stop it, didn't intercede in any way, and knew that Brandy Glanville could behave in an out-of-pocket fashion and still hired her and therefore didn't protect their other employees, the housewives and cast members of Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. That's what's led to the... Uh, emotional damage and harm that Caroline has suffered based on the network's failure to protect her on that trip. It'll be interesting to see where this case goes. We have seen lots of allegations against Bravo and NBC Universal from those in the reality space about whether or not they are in fact protected, whether production pushes them to drink or to behave in a way they wouldn't otherwise Yet others have pushed back saying, you know what you sign up for when you join a show like this, and it's always up to you to say no or yes to things you are doing while on camera. We will see, but this is being filed in New York, and it's something I'm going to be following. And finally, on the Emily Show podcast, I talked about Scott Peterson, a case that so many of you remember. He was convicted in 2004 of the 2002 killing of his wife, Lacey, and their unborn son, Connor. In 2020, his death penalty sentence was overturned by the Supreme Court of California. And in early 2021, he was resentenced to life without the possibility of parole, rather than the prosecutors going through another sentencing trial to try to resentence him to the death penalty. On January 17th, 2024, the Innocence Project, who are now acting as Scott Peterson's appellate lawyers, filed a post-judgment motion for discovery, arguing that there is a potential for new evidence here, evidence that previously was not DNA tested, and they're trying to get access to all of that so that they can do additional testing to see if additional appeals are proper. And Scott Peterson is also in the middle of another habeas appeal and request for new trial and this request for evidence would bolster those ongoing appeals that he filed on his own. 
So I don't know how much movement we will see in the Peterson case in the coming months, but I will absolutely be following along to see if the court grants Scott Peterson the ability to have additional DNA testing done and additional investigations done in this case in hopes to make another motion for new trial and to support his habeas petition. So, and with all of that, I hope that you are now all caught up. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being all honored. That was the Quick Bits. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want to stay in the loop with everything I'm doing, receive the fastest notifications out there and get more Law Nerd community, join me at lawnerdapp.com, our free app for iOS and Android. 